Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Brian and Cars and Coffee with BG. So thank you very much for tuning back in again. This particular build, is, we call it the Old Man. It's the International Scout 2 by AMT. Uh, I originally got the kit when I was up in Oregon uh, many, 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 many years ago. Um, and it wasn't complete. It was missing some parts. So I had free reign to do as I chose with it. And um, in the middle of working on this particular project, we did suffer um, a family tragedy. My father had passed away, which is one of the reasons why I call the truck the old man, because I was halfway through the build when he when he ended up passing away. So it was a surprise to all of us. It was an unexpected situation. Um, it took me months. I, I can't even estimate how many months. I, I'm guessing between six to eight months to, to uh, get back in the right headspace and get back to the bench because I was working on it the night before I got the phone call and then I just left it on the bench uh covered in you know dust and whatever for it, it was it was months I, I can't even hazard a guess to, to what it was but um because of that situation it has made me realize that this hobby is something that's not just something that we do to pass time it's also not something we do to create and garner friendships but it's also something we do to heal. So once I got back into the um, the mode of building again, I started working on that project and I pushed myself to finish it. And I did it in honor of my father and his memory. Uh, excuse me, I get a little emotional talking about this. But um, yeah, I decided to call it the old man. Uh, we took it to several shows in the Pacific Northwest and it actually took a first place in many of the entries, first or second, the many of the entries that we had put it in. And then when we moved back down to Arizona, uh, we started putting it in shows down here and it was again winning first and seconds for the categories that we had it in. So that felt great. Um, I don't think I've had it to Acme yet. I, it's, it's pretty delicate these days. I don't know if it's ever going to make the trip out there, but um, I... I had a lot of fun building it, creating it. The ideas just kept flowing as I was moving through there. And then when it, having to take that super long break um, helped me get kind of, um, I don't know, it just sort of helped me generate even more and better ideas for the build. So we'll show you that here in just a second. But first, we want to talk about this guy right down here, the uh, the Pro Street. Did the decaling over the weekend. Eh, it went okay. The decals are old they were gifted to us by our good friend chris um they are old um i've talked to my buddies about how the decals laid down on there and um chuck over chuck's hobby spot was like all of the decals for that kit do that so, because i think it's because of how old they are but he's like don't worry about it that's how they always go we have some silvering with the decals and i'm going to experiment with a couple of ways to see if we can correct that so we'll we'll let you know how that goes but in the meantime Let's get on to the old man and show you what we got. Okay, so the old man. Um, this guy here, we painted him with um, flat red uh, testers jar paints, airbrushed it, and did that over the whole guy. Uh, but we did do, and I'll we'll see if we can get this picked out here because camera doesn't pick it up very well, but we have a lot of denting. Uh, that we did in the fender area um, that's all done with jeweler files like half round jeweler files and we just carved away on it and then went back over it with sanding sticks to smooth it all out the plastic on this thing is so thick that it was very easy to do that type of work to it without burning through and getting holes which was which would have been fine also i probably would have tried doing rusting but i wasn't doing my rusting patina thing yet this was uh, years before that happened so um, did a lot of that work, just kind of trying to, and then we did a little bit of dry brushing here and there and, you know, um, with some, some silver paint, some testers silver paint. And it worked out okay. Uh, along the, 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 uh, the driver's side door here, you can see that we have a little bit of a, a little bit of a peel up. Let's see if we can get the lighting a little better on there. There we go. A little bit of a, we, the, um, the side molding here, we, we, we scraped that off and then left a little bit peeled up here. And then drilled holes where that, where that would have been mounted to the body. I believe back at, during when this vehicle would have been produced, uh, that they would have actually attached that with mechanical fasteners rather than gluing it to the car body. Uh, but uh, we drilled holes and then had mud kind of streaming out of there like it had been bogging. And yeah, <laughs> uh, a lot of, lot of fun doing that. 
Uh, inside, we actually did make a, a scratch-made roll cage, which of course you can't see because it's a black interior and it's got gun slit for windows, you know, kind of a deal. Um, let's go around the side here. Oh, the wheels and tires. Are you asking about the wheels and tires? I, I think I hear you asking about those. Those are actually off of Hot Wheel Monster Truck uh, toy cars. Um, currently, Hot Wheel, Hot Wheel produces these. They actually have Hot Wheel molded into the sidewall, so it's very... It's very disappointing to do that because you can't really buy those things and steal those now because uh, I've done that and I've tried sanding them off. It doesn't look good. But these, they, they look like the gigantic agricultural wheels, but they were just the right size for this guy. I went ahead and, and went with it. I just I just couldn't think of anything else that was going to look great. And of course, um, resin aftermarket parts weren't, I, I didn't have access to those and I didn't, and 3D printing wasn't a thing yet or in its um, in its infancy still. So uh, we just went ahead and uh, grabbed a Hot Wheel out of the bin and ripped the wheels off of it. I did end up uh, chucking these into my drill and hitting them with sandpaper because I wanted to bring down the tread on them. They were very tall and very sharp, too new looking. So I did chuck them in the drill and then bring them down. And um, yeah, <laughs> I don't remember which one it was, but I chucked it in the, in the drill. It was the very first one I did. I chucked it in the drill. I hit it with the sandpaper uh, stapled to a block of wood. And um, that wheel took off, ricocheted around the garage, and ended up underneath my truck. And I was lucky that thing didn't go through a window or something because it had some velocity, I tell you. But um, while I was underneath my truck looking for it, my dad calls. I had my cell phone with me. My dad calls and he's like, hey, what you doing? I'm like, um, you won't believe me, but um, I'm looking for a tire. <laughs> so I um, ended up having a, a phone call under, under the truck conversation with my dad. It turns out that was one of the last conversations I had with him. Um, but uh, moving around the backside here. More denting. Oh, a little out of focus. Hey, it corrected itself. Finally, a little more denting on the back there. I thought that would be kind of cool. Like maybe he backed into a tree, you know, that kind of stuff. This was one of those builds where I was inventing the idea of of telling a story. Uh, so that's, that's where everything on this guy is coming from. Um, now, I didn't know about Tamiya Panel Liner back then, but I did know... Uh, from reading articles in Fine Scale Modeler that if you want this emblem to pop on whatever you're working on, doesn't matter if it's a car, boat, train, whatever, want that emblem to pop, do a little bit of uh, dark wash over that, which I think I did with some black acrylic, and then came back over it with just um, some dry brushing to do the uh, to do the lettering there, and, and it, it came out awesome. I was really impressed by it. It was an experiment on my part there. More denting and stuff on the rear quarter there. And then we come around to the side. This side here is fairly pristine, relatively speaking, except for the factory remake fender that we uh, we masked off and painted a semi-gloss black. I even drilled out the holes where the uh, turn signal would be. Uh, not 100% correct. <laughs> I, uh, I did get my holes a little bit off. You can tell I haven't really gotten much better since then. So uh, there we go. But uh, around the front here. And then I just bent up a couple pieces of styrene rod, stuck it in there. And then this was some weird piece that was actually in the kit, part of the uh, part of the actual sprue tree. I stuffed that in there and glued it in place. Uh, now, I said that this was missing its engine. I did. Oh, look, I did the other side of the hood, too. Uh, I did end up stuffing in here a Pontiac 6.6 .6 liter engine out of a failed Trans Am build. And it's one of the earliest engines I've done wiring on. Um, and uh, I had a lot of fun doing that. And then a uh, gigantic radiator hose. It's probably a little out of scale, but um, with everything else that's going on with this kit, wasn't worried about that at all. I did cut out the, um, if I remember correctly, the fender inner liners are actually separate pieces, if I remember correctly now. And uh, left those out. And then um, this, this cage up here, that's all styrene rod that I had bent. And I was learning how to do that. I was teaching myself how to do that. Um, really, really, really easy to do, as a matter of fact. Uh, the whole, the hard part for me was getting it all symmetrical. So there we go there. Uh, let's see. And then the mud that we see all over this is actually not mud. And I catch I catch grief from this sometimes from um, from folks. Uh, I was like, why, why, why did you do what you did? Why don't you just go out back and get some sifted dirt and, and, and use that? I'm like, well, I didn't want to. I was living in um, a town home at the time. There was no dirt. I wasn't going to go out prospecting for dirt. 
So I thought, you know, the whole point of doing model building is to replicate stuff in miniature things that are of real, uh, that, are, that are real. And um, I thought the best way to do this would be to go out and figure out a way to create my own mud. And um, I ended up going down to the kitchen and rifling through the cabinets and coming up with um, uh, corn flour and uh, excuse me, corn, corn flour and corn meal and mixing those together with um, oil paints. And I could get just the right color and I could get just the right consistency. And the corn meal, you can see, has the bits of grit in it that are all over the truck, which worked out great. I could uh, add mineral spirits uh, to uh, to thin it out even more. I could add a little bit of different uh, color to it to um, make it look like dried mud and then wet mud. I had absolute total control over what I was working with and that's why I did it. I thinned it out even more after I did all my splotchy stuff and then went over it with the old toothbrush. Tooth, tooth, blah, blah. <laughs> Speaking of tooth, new teeth, uh, toothbrush method. And inflicted it all over the truck. I, I masked off the uh, window, windshield wiper pathways and uh, just went nuts with it and had a, had a really, really good time just making a mess. I did that outside so I didn't get the entire house too rusty, uh, too messy. But um, yeah, really good time doing this. Uh, I, I don't think I do a, da a darn thing on this any different than I did it. I really did um, enjoy this. And we've gotten uh, rewarded by this. Uh, effort uh, several times in the past. So very, very happy about that. Uh, I've taken this out of uh, the competition, um, I guess, circuit is the best way to say that. Uh, specifically because I, I've taken it shows, I've taken first or second place in a lot of shows and it was time to retire it. But the front axle is very delicate and I did an axle flip on this in order to give it the height I wanted. And it was... Um, it's very hard on these axles because they're so thin. This you can tell this one here is a little wonkified. Uh, that thing keeps breaking, just snaps off. I, I reattach it, snaps off every time. One of these days, maybe I'll just stick a Dana a Dana axle underneath there and just you know be done with it. But I did have to lengthen the drive shafts. I uh, you know figured out how to do that. I did. Um, uh, solder exhaust on this guy here you can see underneath there I, I did a really good job with that solder exhaust I'm really proud of that and we use shrink tubing for the collectors and then uh, just um, actual styrene rod I think it was no I take that back that's 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 aluminum tubing you use that to uh, create the, the rest of the exhaust system so um, it's, a, it's a it's a straight pipe I guess you want to call it but um, yeah, um, a lot of fun doing this guy. A lot of memories attached to this, both good and bad. But um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing on this guy here. Learned a lot by doing this, and um, I, I've, I've, I've enjoyed refining this mud making process over the over the years. So it's gotten even better. So there you go. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm sorry this took so long. We had a lot to discuss, but um, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have. Thank you so much. And uh, time for a cookie, I think. Anyway, we're going to get on to the coffee thing, part of the more, uh, portion of the morning and then probably get back to uh, yard work. Huzzah. So we'll see the, see how that goes. Y'all take it easy. Have a great rest of your week. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye now. I'm going to even add some snappy closing music.